Can I tell you about my wife? You know, my wife, she's got a proverb for every situation. You know, with her, a rolling stone gathers no more. She got to look before you leave. I'm sure that your wife is a very nice woman. But what has that got to do with the case? Boy, this is a fantastic rug. My wife would love this rug. We got to get a new rug, and this is just the kind she wants. And he said he'd send over his very best man. Was that a fact? Well, my wife, she says I'm second best, but, uh... She claims there are 80 fellas tied for first. Oh, gee whiz, that's, that's too bad. Gosh, my wife is gonna be disappointed. Well, it was a nice ride anyhow. You know, I really don't understand this business stuff. Of course, I never could understand business. My wife, she always makes out her taxes. I'll tell you, Mrs. Ferris, I'm the worst cook in the world, but there's one thing I do terrific, and that's an omelet. Even my wife admits it. Look, ma'am, I don't mean any offense. I'm just uh, trying to tie up loose ends. You see, I'm compulsive that way. It's just, uh, well, that's what my wife says about it, just. <laughs> Are you really? Except, you know, I was looking through that stuff last night. Mm-hmm. And uh, it drives my wife crazy, you know, because we have the lamp right next to the bed and the poor thing, she can't sleep. But I'm afraid my wife called and we're going to have to make a little detour. I hope you don't mind. My wife always calls about some errand at the grocery store. A bit different this time. Death in the family. We'll use my car. Where were you? In the golf course? No. No, my wife went bowling, and I was sort of testing out this new hammock, listening to the game, then I ran into this Sunday. Yeah, well, uh, you want to take a look? You said somebody was in a big panic? I told you that my wife and I are big fans of yours, didn't I? Well, there's a lot of snobbery among the wives. Because in my line of business, we meet a lot of people. So one lieutenant, he brings home one guy's, and another lieutenant, he brings home another guy's. So when the wives get together, they can say, I got an actor, I got a district attorney. I thought it would be nice if my wife had a conductor's autograph. Would you mind signing this? What do you want me to say? Just put your name, that'll be good enough. Lovely chatting with you. Yeah, I'm going to tell my wife that I met a real English yeah, butler. She's going to get a terrific kick out of that. Thank you. Goodbye. So, I have to thank my wife for one. Because she's mad at everybody. She's even mad at the ice cream man. Why does the ice cream truck have to come just before lunch or just before dinner, ruin the child's appetite? I have to listen to that. I hear that three times a week. When they used the telephone, it affected the radio. I noticed the static. But don't feel bad. I didn't know anything about this myself. Until I had trouble with my TV. Well, my wife used the hairdryer. So the electrician, he explains to me, you find this boring? You know, when my wife and I try to remember what happened yesterday or the day before, well, we don't agree on anything. I gotta talk to my wife. When a case gets too tough, I gotta talk to my wife. Is she a policewoman? No. Actually, she doesn't talk about the case. She talks about everything else. It takes my mind off it. Where is your wife? You said she might come along. Well, we had a little trouble to babysit her. You see, our regular girl has her finals tomorrow, and everybody else is down there at the rock concert. You know what it is when you have kids. There's only one problem I was telling my wife. I got it all up here. I can't put it down here. Holy Christmas! I just found out it wasn't Haywood. I already called my wife to break the news. She loves Haywood. I didn't want her to hear it on TV. You better call it back. Thank goodness she wasn't home. Oh, listen. When I told my wife that I met a guy who made commercials, you know what she did? This woman runs into the other room. She comes back with some photographs of herself. She claims that when she sees housewives on TV doing commercial, she says they don't look like housewives. So she says, show them my picture. I'll be on TV. Uh, well, Lieutenant, I don't make commercials. Uh, I'm a motivation research specialist. Oh. It's... Well, listen, no problem. I mean, I said I'd mention it, which I did, so I'm in the clear. I think it's a miracle this guy got out of the plane. You know who was relieved? My wife. She's a big fan of this fella. Knows all his albums. You have a phone, sir? Yes, of course. Well, what's the problem? I'd like to call my wife. It'll only take a moment. Be my guest. It's uh, in the office. Thank you. It's nothing serious. Last night it was Betty Davis. 
2 o'clock in the morning, my wife wants to watch Betty Davis. So we're watching Betty Davis. Did you find out about that key yet, Lieutenant? Oh, it is brutal. I'm going to an affair, you see, so... Oh, splendid, look. an affair, very nice. Uh, yeah, my wife, she's a bolting lead to having this dinner dance. It's an annual thing, you know, 1750 a couple. And I want to look good. good. Remember the day that we went on the picnic and it got so hot that we had to come home? Was that last week or the week before? What day last week? How hot did it get? All right, I'll call the weather bureau. Had a lettuce and two quarts of milk. All right. Listen, every time I go to the bathroom, there she is. Oh, I'm, really, as long as I can remember, on every one of my wife's jaws, on the lotion, on the tubes, on the cream, I guess you're not married, huh? Listen, my wife's got a cousin in the valley. He owns a body shop. I mean, if you want me to talk to him. Well, that's very decent of you. You see, I have a cousin in Beverly Hills. He does all my work for me. You are a fan of his? Yes, sir. You? Uh, well, my wife more than me, but I'm getting there. Well, they were written with a black eyebrow pencil. I spotted it right away because that's what my wife always uses when she makes out a grocery list. When she goes into her purse, that's the only kind of pencil she can ever find. Well, listen, you know, I appreciate it very much, but my wife does all the shopping in the family. She'd be very upset if I bought anything, you know, without talking to her about it first. Of course, of course. Uh, it's very nice for the husband and wife to decide on this. Can we uh, make an appointment? That'd be nice. I couldn't talk to her about this, Mr. Grindel. Uh, she'd think I was working on a dangerous case. She cries easily. She cries when she loses bowling, you know. Mr. Brown, I don't know, but you are a celebrity. And there are a lot of crackpots in the world, and there's just no accounting for people's reactions. I mean, sometimes I even wonder about my wife. Not that she's a crackpot, but uh, when she's listening to your records, uh, the way she carries on. <laughs> but not like she wants to kill me. No, sir, just the opposite. My wife's got no head for crying. We go to those who've done a movie, she always picks the wrong murderer. And I want to tell you something. If my wife decided to murder me, she could come up with a better alibi than you've got. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. Don't misunderstand. You're a very nice man. I like you very much, but I would hate to have to depend upon you if I was in a hurry for something. Geez, you know, that's what my wife says. I'm sure she does. Get to the point, Lieutenant. Right. Just one more thing.